Hello and welcome to another Trades and Tutorials video. This is Jeff Fish, president of MarketGage.com and in this video I am going to take a look at two measures of the, the buying power of the consumer, which is important because if you've got the consumer behind the economy, then you're in much better shape. And also, if you've got the consumer really uh, spending, it's going to be good for the uh, stock market in general. So, before I do that, if you're just finding us on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you don't already realize you can get more videos like this at marketgage.com forward slash tutorials. And finally, if you don't already realize you can see this video in HD by changing the settings in the lower right hand corner. All right, so with that, I'm going to take a look at two ETFs that both are, you know, supposedly a measure of how strong the, the consumer is. And so those ETFs are the XLY, which is consumer disc the consumer discretionary spider, and the XRT, which is the retail uh, ETF. Now, the retail ETF is in white in this chart, and the XLY is in red. And this is a weekly chart, and I've got a weekly chart because I wanted to go all the way back, or as far back as I could. And so it, it looks like the XRT starts in uh, the middle of 2006. And I want you to notice that all through this period, they have at various times, one might be stronger than another, um, but they've always gone up and down with each other, right? And so what I mean by that is typically uh, when, say, the red makes a new high, the white will also make a new high. And while they might both sell off um, a little bit differently, they both sell off. And that pattern has persisted since its beginnings in 2006 until about this point. Now, the weekly chart makes it a little harder to see. So I'm going to go to a daily chart. And when I go to the daily chart, you'll see that the difference is glaring. All right. Now I think you can see what I mean. So here's XRT. Now this is a percentage change chart. But so really all we're looking at is the relationship between the two. And if we take the time period from about April of 2015, where they both peaked out together, and I'll just draw a line across here, you can see that at this point, the XLY continued to trend higher while XRT struggled to get to new highs. Now that in and of itself wouldn't be all that spectacular. And then in August, uh, they both got uh, killed like everything else did. But since August, you can see XLY has come back up to new highs. And at the same time, XRT nowhere near its highs. And on this recent pullback of the last couple days, a uh, couple weeks, XRT is actually well below its uh, August crash lows. Whereas XLY has just come back into a, a relatively reasonable uh, area to expect it to pull back into. So the question is this, which one is right? Which one's a better measure of the strength of the consumer? Is it the consumer discretionary or is it the retail? Now, clearly they do measure um, different things, but if the consumer is really strong, both of these or consumer is really weak, both of these really should be saying the same thing. And whenever you've got two ETFs that historically have said the same thing, have tracked each other um, as closely as these two have, and they go to a period like this where they're going in completely opposite directions, this is a relationship you want to keep your eye on. Now, the bears will say that XRT is a warning sign that the market really can't continue to go higher. The bulls will say, well, the XLYs represent uh, the consumer too, and the consumer's doing okay. They're just spending their money in different ways. Ultimately, to be bullish, what we really want to see is XRT come back and start to go in the same direction as XLY. To be really bearish, the opposite would be true. XLY should start to really accelerate to the downside. Now, I'm not 
really going to predict which way that's going to go. But with the market heading higher, I would like to see XRT start to participate somewhat in the upside. And at a bare minimum, it's going to be really important to watch to make sure that XLY continues on an upward trend. Because if they're both heading down, that's not going to be good for the overall market. All right, so pretty easy analysis to do with ETFs, and it can be pretty uh, powerful at the same time, both in terms of generating trades in the XLY and in terms of having a either stronger or weaker conviction on the direction of the overall market. So I hope that helps, and I'll see you in the next video.